Chapter 6, Thursday, August 29th, 1985, Part 1. I don't catch up with Max until the middle of the week. I left a note in her locker yesterday, inviting her to a movie night. I asked her to respond by slipping a note in mine, but there was nothing in my locker when I checked this morning. After school, I take my bike. No more drops off for me, Mom. I'll manage, thanks. And, and search for her in, in three places I know she's bound to be if she isn't at home. I don't find her at the arcade, which is both surprising and not. Everyone's thinking about change, and Max is no different. Maybe there's a part of her that realizes, just like the boys and I have, that the kids in the arcade are getting younger and younger, and we're looking older and older, standing next to them. Next spot is Benny's Burgers, which hasn't been open since Els first showed up in Hawkins and, and Benny died. Max goes there whenever she wants to be alone, and if she doesn't want, to, uh, want anyone to find her. It's a long ride, and when I arrive, the place is shut tight, empty. Peeling boards, shattered glass, and dust cover the floors over which I can see multiple footprints crisscrossing each other. A favorite spot for the kids from Hawkins High, judging by the cigarette butts, beer cans, and joints smoked down to as far as little fingers can hold them. Everything I expect is here, but Max. So I try Max's third spot, Elmore Skate Park. It's not technically a skate park, at least not like cool kind, at least not like the cool kind Max describes from California, the ones from from uh, from movies that look like a meteor dropped and left a concrete crater. Elmore looks more like someone started digging a canal and changed their mind halfway through. It's just a large ditch surrounded by a wire fence with a random graffiti painted in it. Many of them are referencing someone or some things named Cab and Hawk along with a lot of crudely drawn boobs and penises. And then there's the skaters themselves, always dressed in, in, in jeans or leather jackets, wearing weird hats and berets, earrings on one ear, always a boombox nearby, blurring metal or garage bands. Skating isn't really a thing in Hawkins, but even though summer is technically over, the skate park is full of punks. They pretend to be tough, but I don't think they, they scare anyone. I'm pretty sure if I paid attention, I'd realize it's all about the same eight or ten kids from down the road who lays around trying to be different. This is the closest thing to West Coast vibes we get down here in Hawkins. Max escapes here making makes sense. Max escaping here makes sense. When I find her, she's not skating, just sitting on the edge of the concrete barrier watching. She seems to do a lot of watching these days. I drop my bike in the grass and shuffle up to her. Hey, I say, waving, get my note? She looks up, yeah. Oh, okay, I say, I wanted to check. Okay, she says, so you'll make it to movie night. I'll think about it, Lucas. I, I take a deep breath and settle in beside her, beside her. She seems surprised by the action, which surprises me. Come on, Max, I say, I know you miss L. And maybe you're waiting for her to come back before you start hang, hanging out again. But we all have to find ways to live without those who are gone, you know? Besides, the buyers are only coming back for a day. And we'll probably only spend it spent and we'll probably only spend it packing. I say those who are gone. Because I know what mentioning Billy does to her. I hope she gets the message regardless. Max frowns. What, is ha what does this have to do with anything? I'm just saying movie night might be good for you. And I said, I'll think about it. Okay, okay, I sighed. I want you to know you can talk to me. She looks at me directly. Something inside me warms up. And for the first time in a long time, I am reminded of her small, I'm reminded of her small blue eyes, sharp but sensitive. I'm reminded of that mix of intensity and tenderness, her sincerity 
towards herself and others, was always the reason I was drawn to her in the first place. These days, I feel like what's, what's slipping away the most. These, these bright eyes look dim and tired now. Yeah, I know, she says. She doesn't follow that up with anything. So I let the sounds of the skate park settle between us. Boards lifting and dropping. Plastic and rubber wheels slapping concrete. Shoes scuffing and squeaking. Some thrash metal um, song blaring from the lone boombox. The swish of a skater sailing by. The occasional grunt of someone falling. I'll try and make it is all she says after. Part two. On my ride back home, I finally come to terms with the feelings I've had all summer, that a part of Max died on the 4th of July. I mean, people died, died. Hopper for one, the Holloways, Mrs. Driscoll, along with a bunch of other flayed people. Across town, there's not a single person who doesn't know someone who who knows someone who lost someone to, to the summer. And the, and the thought the news report softened everything up by saying that what happened was a chemical spill. It still didn't stop the deaths from hitting us hard. Max is the only, Max is the only one among us, the inner circle, to have witnessed the death of the person she lost. She always said she didn't consider Billy family. But there's something about seeing a person die before your eyes. I lost my dad just a few months ago. September 7th, 2022. It's still fresh. I will admit I absolutely hated Billy for how he treated her, how he treated me. But standing right there, watching the spider monster dig into his chest like he was a throwaway mannequin, it still gives me nightmares. She cried a lot that night and many days after. And there was nothing I could do but try to be there for her. A part of me wanted to be upset, to say, Billy made your life a living hell. But when she told me something, but, but she later told me something, he once said about me being bad news for her. It made me even angrier. He didn't even know me, but thought I was a problem. And what did he, what did he base that on? A part of me thought maybe he deserved what happened to him. That maybe the mind flayer chose him as a vessel for destruction because he al already had so much darkness in his heart because Billy, was destroying himself. But no one deserves to die like that. And no one deserves to watch that happen to family. I've tried everything I could to get Max to come out of the black hole she fell into that day. Hangouts, movie theater dates. I even volunteered to go over to her house since she won't come to mine. But she still hasn't let me visit her home. Even now that Billy even now that Billy, the main reason for her keeping me away from her home, is gone, she still won't let me come by. I could be wrong, and she may be as mopey as Mike is over Elle leaving. I get it. They've been real close since the summer. Closer, even now that they're both lost, that they both lost someone. Between Max's parents' divorce, her move away from California, and Billy's death, L leaving is yet another new space opening up in Max's life. I understand it can be easy, but I'm her boyfriend. So it's my job to show her I can help make that space not feel so empty. All she has to do is let me in. And all I have to do is try harder to open that door. Hey, you guys, sorry for the pauses in that chapter. It's kind of a tough read for me. But uh, if you enjoyed, please give me a like. I would appreciate it. If you're following along, I'll be reading Chapter 7 next week. Um, and I'll post the video probably sometime around... Um, 
December the 7th. So, thanks so much, you guys. And click on the link for chapter 7, which, is, which will be next, if you're reading this or listening to this in the playlist. Thank you so much.